today we are going to talk about insulin in general. So we are going to talk about what insulin is, its role, insulin resistance, what causes insulin resistance, prevention, risk factors, and so on. So there is a lot to learn in this episode, and I hope that you will stay with me and learn this much. So if you are coming into this channel for the first time, my name is Mzangila Senior and I'm a personal fitness trainer. So I specialize in helping people live a healthier lifestyle in general. So whatever you are looking, whether you want to change your lifestyle, whether you want a healthy diet, whether you want exercise, whether you want to change your habits, then I'm the guy to go to. And I've been in this field for the last five years and so. So I have one or two things that I like to share with you. Uh, so in beginning uh, this topic, so we are going to begin with understanding what insulin is. Insulin is an, a hormone that is produced by the pancreas to regulate blood sugar. Very short, very precise. A hormone produced by the pancreas to regulate blood sugar. So when you consume your food, when you consume your carbohydrates, when you consume your proteins, when you consume your fats, that uh, food is going to be present, of course, in uh, the stomach, and then it's going to be absorbed maybe in the small intestine, meaning it goes into the bloodstream. So when the food is processed, it's going to turn into sugar. And that's what gives us energy, especially carbohydrates and fats. So uh, that's our, those are energy giving foods and when they are processed, they give us energy. So that's what we call sugar. So they are released in the bloodstream and they are supposed to go into the cell because most activities in our bodies have happen on the cellular level. Yeah? So those are, so when you need energy, energy has to be transported to the cells. Yeah? When you need to feel something, that has to happen on the cellular level. So the work of the insulin basically is to remove the sugar from the blood into the cells. So that's the, that's how it relates the blood sugar. So it ensures the energy that you have, the blood sugar, the sugar that you have in your blood is transferred into the cells and that's how you get your energy. So in the case whereby the insulin cannot be able to do that kind of job, then that's where we call that insulin resistance. Yeah, insulin resistance. So the work of the insulin is to open the cells so that the sugar can enter the cell. So at some point, that is not possible. So the cells can no longer respond to the effects of insulin, basically because the insulin has been overpowered. So it's not working the way it's supposed to be. That. That's what we call insulin, insulin resistance. So um, insulin resistance most of the time happens when maybe people consume consistently large amounts of sugars so that there is always a very high production of insulin to be able to regulate that uh, blood sugar and when the blood sugar is consistently high then sometimes insulin may fail to do its work yeah let's say it's like five uh it's like you usually uh you go to work in your station you usually have to uh you usually maybe do two rows so maybe you are packaging and those uh, products or goods are coming at a speed of maybe five seconds so you take five seconds to package your goods so it reaches maybe a point there's a malfunction and then these goods are coming at each second this other goods come so you are not going to be able to package all these goods. It's the same, that's the same case that happens when insulin stops working or functioning. Yeah, it means there's a lot of work to do, so sometimes you cannot be able to do that kind of work. 
and that's what we call insulin resistance. So what causes insulin resistance? Uh, number one is sedentary lifestyle. So sedentary lifestyle is whereby you eat and you sit down, you are doing nothing. So your physical activity, activity is very low. So a sedentary lifestyle involves people who don't do much. They are just eating and relaxing. Eating and relaxing. So they don't move around a lot. So, uh, so there is the whatever they consume is not extended, it's not used. So it's usually used and that accumulates. And when that accumulates, it leads maybe to things like obesity. Obesity is also one way in which uh, you can be able to get uh, to get insulin resistance and this uh, basically because you have a lot of fat in your body yeah in your body and you are giving it more it more so you are eating again and again and again so uh, insulin resistance is going likely to so these are risk factors so in risk factors we have genetics so some people are highly predisposed to have insulin resistance number two we have obesity number three as i've said we have lifestyle accidentally uh, lifestyle number four we have poor diet so poor diet eating unhealthy meals or food that's going also to uh, lead to insulin resistance then we have age so so many diseases come with the age uh, basically because uh, there are so many changes that happen with age uh, basically you are slowing down your immune system is also going down uh, your skin is not elastic anymore as it used to be you are not as active as you used to be so there are so many things that come with age and one of them being uh, insulin resistance we also medical conditions such as PCOS so for women who have polycystic ovaries ovary something syndrome uh, also uh, it's, it's, it's a, it's a, it's a, it's a the syndrome is also a problem so such I also can be able to have issues with insulin resistance so what are the health implications implications of insulin resistance let's say now you have insulin resistance what else what then uh, uh, what is the next step for you one of the things you are likely to have type 2 diabetes if uh, your insulin resistance is not addressed then you are going into diabetes type 2 so insulin resistance in another name is called pre-diabetes yeah so pre-diabetes so health complication number one type 2 diabetes number two cardiovascular diseases so <coughs> you are very likely to have cardiovascular diseases because if it's not working a while then you are also going to amass a lot of fat in your body and also that's going to uh, make the body or the heart work harder than it's supposed to, to work because it's doing a lot of work you need to be able to supply that kind of blood and that is also going to lead to hypertension yeah? hypertension you have a high blood pressure that's what hypertension basically is so it's high blood pressure because the heart is trying to keep up with uh, producing enough pressure to be able to drive blood into all the bodies parts of your body yeah? Then, of course, we might have high cholesterol levels in one way or another because insulin is not working, so uh, your sugars are not being controlled, your fats are not being controlled. Basically, uh, that also can be able to uh, lead to abnormal lipid levels. Of course, we might also have non alcoholic fatty liver disease, uh, which comes around uh, from bad eating, basically. and. Uh, also, that's uh, another implication. Of course, there have been studies also that say that maybe you might have to uh, be more predisposed to certain cancers. Yeah. Anyway, so what are the symptoms? Now, uh, it's good to really, before we go into symptoms, uh, it's good to be able to understand that insulin resistance is 
uh, is deadly if not addressed because once you get to diabetes and also that is because some of these diseases are not that obvious we talked about hypertension being a silent killer because the uh, symptoms are not obvious so uh, this that's why we say these things are deadly because you might realize you have them when it's too late and what happens when it's too late sometimes uh, we call acute cases yeah so when you are in a crisis mode yeah? so someone who's in a crisis mode for instance goes through, through amputation maybe your digestive system is not working maybe you go blind and so on because those are health implications of uh, uh, insulin resistance because if you get type 2 diabetes and it's not addressed early enough uh, and then or it's not uh, re discovered early enough you are likely to even lose your sight or then you get to uh, a place whereby you have to be amputated uh, so there are so many things. So symptoms of IR insulin resistance. Number one is fatigue. Uh, you are fatigued most of the time. You, you don't know what's really happening. Uh, but then you don't have energy to do anything. Basically because uh, your insulin is not working so you are not getting a good supply uh, of energy to the cells because that's the way you get your energy if the sugar is supplying the cells now the insulin is not supplying the energy to the sugar in the cells so you don't have energy and if you don't have energy also number two is increased hunger so you feel because you don't have energy the body will think that it's because you don't have food so you will feel uh, hungry so that's a symptom number two increased hunger so again you feel like you need to eat so that you can be able to get energy and that will lead to weight gain. So you are experiencing an explained weight gain also. No, basically it's because uh, your sugar is not being used, so it's being stored in the body. Yeah. So that's how you are gaining weight. So I explained weight gain, and then you have a difficulty losing weight. So that's another thing. So you are having. You are gaining weight, but then you are finding it very hard to uh, lose weight. And then number uh, another one is skin changes, so you will see dark or uh, some patches on your skin. That's also another symptom. So those are the most common. Uh, so once you begin noticing some of these things, fatigue, increased hunger, weight gain, difficulty losing weight, and skin changes, so it's really good for you to go get checked out. So, uh, don't always be the person who waits until the last minute, until things get bad for you to go and get checked out. Because there are some things which are really um, can be detrimental, especially uh, when it comes to insulin resistance. And sometimes, if you ignore know these things, you are going to regret later. So, how then can we manage? Yeah. Uh, if you have discovered maybe you are having insulin resistance. So what are uh, management and treatment protocols? So number one basically is a lifestyle modification and I usually do this a lot with most of my clients so I'm able to meet most of my clients and so when someone calls me and tells me I'm having this issue and all this issue so basically what I usually tell them we have to meet yeah? so we have to discuss these things face to face so that I can be able to see how you look like, uh, you know, how your problems are like, you can be able to have a, an honest conversation and I can be able to explain in length how we can be able to maybe do some lifestyle modifications because it's good to be able to understand what is going on in your life, how you do your daily activities of living and all that because all those things really count at the end of the day and that's what is going to help us you know, to modify your lifestyle. So in terms of modification, what you're going to do is regular exercise uh, because that's going to help you manage your weight and uh, also uh, cut some calories or rather spend, expend some calories. And also we're going to look at healthy diet uh, so that you can be able to consume uh, food that are not high in uh, calories so that you can be able to have a balanced diet that gives you nutritional value and also helps you in 
a big healthier person. And when we talk about healthy diets, what we are going to look at, we are going to look at uh, eliminating processed foods, uh, simple sugars, uh, and also other additives, things that are not providing any nutritional value to you. And we are going to replace those with uh, complex carbohydrates, a good uh, sources of protein, good sources of natural fat, and maybe uh, good some few fruits here and there if we must. Yeah. And then we're going to talk about weight loss because most of the time, if you're going to have IR, then you are going to be suffering from uh, being obese. So we have to talk our final ways of how to lose weight. Basically through good eating, uh, physical exercise, and also changing other habits in general. And then of course, uh, you can be able to get some medication if maybe you have been uh, found with hypertension or type 2 diabetes. It's also good to begin a, med a medical regimen uh, so that you can be able to at least prevent or rather stabilize your sugars. And during that period, you should be able also to now look at your lifestyle modifications so that you can be able, because you don't want to, uh, because insulin resistance is reversible, type 2 diabetes is reversible, and these things are can only be done through modification of lifestyle. So for those people who have been on um, medicine for their life, this is not a terminal illness. Yeah? So uh, type 2 diabetes, hypertension, these are not things that, these are not terminal illnesses like cancer. You can reverse this by changing how you do your things, your lifestyle, your habits and all. So, prevention. So number one, and I'm going to stress on this, is good to have a healthy weight. Maintain a healthy weight. So eat well, exercise, eat well, exercise. Number two, regular physical activity. You don't have to go to the gym. Uh, that's, I think most people are, have uh, this misconception that you need to go to the gym for you to be able to work out. You know, you can work out from wherever you are, whether it's at home, whether it's you are at work, whether you are on vacation, whether you are seated, you can work out from wherever you are. The thing is, if you don't know these things, kindly go on YouTube, find exercises that you can work from home, you can work from office. And you are going to find so many, but then the thing is, regular physical activity. And then number three, balance diet. So balance diet, we are talking about being able to give your body uh, the necessary nutrients it needs to operate uh, on, on optimally. And also being able to have food that gives you consistent supply of energy. Yeah? You don't want to uh, have foods that only give us a uh, temporal supply of energy. No, we want to live foods that are complex and that can supply us with energy for a very long time, a period of time. And this way we are going to avoid snacking because snacking is where the problem is. It's where people eat unhealthy, random and healthy foods. Yeah? And then uh, managing number four, uh, prevention measure is managing stress levels uh, because uh, when you are stressed also people try attempt to beach eat or stress eat they don't have a good relationship with their food so they use food as a coping mechanism i think i talked this uh, about this in the previous video uh, so it's good if you are stressed to find other ways of managing or coping with your stress and that includes exercise of course number two meditating number three yoga number four reading all finding hobbies hobbies are good when it comes to stress management yeah uh, number five adequate sleep so adequate sleep also helps balance your hormones yeah also so one of the things that happen uh, now bodies happen when we are resting so ensure you have adequate sleep that's very of high quality and we talk about seven to nine hours of good sleep. Number nine, I think, which is the last one, avoiding smoking and excessive alcohol consumption. So for those people who love shereke, uh, then uh, and you have a, a problem, it's good to stop smoking uh, because smoking slows down healing and also it, it destroys the skin. 
alcohol consumption also has sometimes the uh, stress organs and also it has somehow a very high calorie uh, content. So you should be able to moderate these things if you have. Um, and if you can stop, please do so. And because this for, for the benefit of your health, yeah? uh, because the thing is you have to be realistic. When you are uh, sick, everyone else around you suffers. You become a burden to everyone around you. So as much as let's say life is yours, it's at the same time it's not yours alone because once you are sick you become a burden to everyone around you yeah? so let's take care of ourselves and uh, with that i think you can also be able to take care of others as well i hope you have learned something from our question on uh, insulin or insulin resistance can you leave a comment and you don't forget to subscribe and also to like and leave a comment. Cheers. I've enjoyed talking to you and I hope to see you next time on episode 4. Peace.